Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. Uh, today I'll be covering Lab 3 of the Cisco Open SDN Controller Hands-On Lab, specifically looking at exploring the BGPLS Manager. So the first thing that we're going to do uh, fairly quickly is uh, go ahead and look at uh, Router 1 and just verify that uh, the PCE pair has been already configured and it should be and what we want to do is make sure that the PCE pair is configured um, as the open SDN controller so this is the total configuration that you need basically just saying that uh, the open SDN controller is going to be a, a IP uh, version 4 peer uh, and uh, basically identify the uh, OSC uh, IP address 172.16.1.200. So the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is just verify and see what the status of that peering is. Uh, we can do a show command, uh, show MPLS uh, traffic engineering uh, Let's see, PCE peer. Oops. A little typo there. Okay, and we can see that the peer is up. Um, it is the address that we were expecting, and it seems to be just fine. And the reason that we'll need that is when we start doing some configurations, one of the first thing I'm going to do is uh, just try to pull uh, the PCE information. So let's go ahead. Um, what we'll be doing now is basically uh, start sending REST commands uh, to the API, uh, API interface of the OpenSDN controller, both for configuration reasons and then also to start pulling information from the controller uh, about the network. Uh, so we'll, what we'll be using uh, in this lab and uh, in other labs is uh, Postman, which is a free uh, application of Chrome. So we'll go ahead and click into that real quick and already have some collections that are uh, already uh, created. And the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get a token uh, for security purposes so that we can communicate with the OpenSDN controller. And this allows us to communicate on port 443 as opposed to uh, the Helium default which is uh, 8181. Uh, this ensures that uh, the traffic is uh, secure. Uh, so go ahead and uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be clicking on uh, create token and under basic authentication uh, we input the username and password um, that the controller is expecting and hit refresh and then go ahead and uh, click send. Let me see if I can do that again real quick. Okay. Okay, so the password uh, is actually instead of in the basic off, what it wants is uh, right here just in the um, uh, URL that you type, which has the IP address, the password goes right here. Password and username is admin, and uh, the password is uh, Cisco1 right here. So it's already filled out for us. That's why the wasn't taking under the other command. Uh, but anyway, you just hit send, and what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to give us uh, an access token that we can use for all of our other uh, activities. So what you need to do is uh, we just need to copy this access token. And then the next thing we're going to do just to verify that we're having connectivity with the op OpenSDN controller is to actually get uh, the topology based on the PCE peer. Uh, so click in, uh, we're going to click um, number two which is get PCE peer topology or PSEP topology and here's where we're going to use the token. We're going to go up here to basic auth. We're going to type in uh, 
uh, token and under the password we're actually just going to paste that token that we just got we're going to hit refresh header and hit send and see what happens here let's try that again Okay, and it appears to be working. Um, this is all the information that we're getting directly from the controller. As you can, you're probably recognizing some of the IP addresses. These are the BGP loopback addresses, 192.168.0.1. Um, here's a node ID, 192.168.0.3. This is router 3. Uh, this is router 1. Here's router 2 and here's router 4 and, and as you can see the state is that it's all synchronized so it has all the information so uh, the reason that we just did that is just to verify that we are uh, able to communicate with the OpenSDN controller so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and actually configure uh, the OpenSDN controller uh, to connect as a route reflector client and uh, what we're going to go ahead and do, is the first thing is configure the BGP AS and IP. So go ahead and click, um, we're going to click the post BGP AS and IP. And the important fields here uh, that you should be aware of is basically we're just giving it the local AS number of BGP, which is uh, 65223, uh, six and then we're giving it the IP uh, address. Um, that it should be advertising from. So instead of a loop back, we're just using the 172.16.1.200, which is uh, the IP address of the uh, OpenSDN controller. And just uh, it's using obviously the same autonomous system number as um, all the outers, and you can obviously verify that by doing a show IBGP sum here on router 1 and as you can see it's 65223 and uh, the important thing to to realize right now is right now there is no peer relationship that's going on even though the controllers up because we haven't configured it yet it's still showing just active it's it's uh, still trying to make a connection but uh, there's nothing there yet and obviously there's no prefixes that's uh, been received so what we'll go ahead and do is uh, go ahead and I guess we need to send it ahead and get that token again for some reason it's uh, not staying I think I had a space in the word token. Okay, that's what it was. Watch out for those spaces. Um, what we should be getting back is basically a 204, which is uh, basically uh, the server successfully processed it, the OpenSDN controller. Uh, process process that but it's not actually giving any information back which that's exactly what we're looking for uh, the next thing that we need to do to go ahead and, and get this configuration is uh, post uh, the IAN a type uh, basically we're just changing that to true um, so you can take a look here this is uh, 
what we're basically doing is saying that uh, uh, changing this IANA link state attribute type right here. So we go through the same process. And again, uh, it's basically saying that the OpenSDN controller went ahead and took that. So that, that appears to be working. And then the next thing that we need to do is actually uh, tell it who it needs to actually uh, peer with. So we'll look here, and there's two or three things here that uh, are important. Uh, number one, um, the IP address of who it's going to be peering with, which is the route reflector, and that's the 192.168.0.1. So that's important. Um, And the rest of the information is pretty much just the generic uh, form. You know, in the uh, lab guide, it actually shows you where you can uh, pull up this information from Open Daylight. So this isn't something that you have to uh, type out every time that you want to do this. You basically just uh, copy and paste, and then what you're wanting to do is basically just put in the uh, just put in the IP address of the the BGP pair. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, hit the send button here. And again, we got it back at 204, uh, no content. So that's exactly what we wanted. And so the next thing that we want to do is go back and look at the router uh, connection and see where we are, if anything's happened yet or not. Oh, and it looks like uh, we have. Uh, there is a connection it is now uh, peer um, so we're not receiving any prefixes from it but of course the, the SDN controller isn't advertising anything but the the peer relationship is up so what that means is uh, the open SDN controller should be getting all of uh, the prefixes and the link state information from uh, the route reflector so let's go ahead and, and go to the open SDN controller and um, to see if it's getting any information. So we'll go back to the Open SDN controller, and now what we'll do is just look at the BGP LS manager, and it uh, is actually showing all of uh, uh, our BGP routers, and you can get uh, a little bit of information here. You can go ahead and hover over one of the routers and any BGP routers that are uh, directly attached uh, will be highlighted and any ones uh, that are not directly attached uh, won't be. So for example 3 it's connected to 2 and 4 uh, but the 1 disappears. You can also click on it and you can get information uh, specifically about the interfaces. Um, it's uh, the loopback address for router 3, for example, is the 192.168.0.3. And then it's actually showing you the different prefixes um, that's uh, on that specific router. Uh, so you can do that. So this is uh, just some basic information. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out. And there's, there's different things that you can do that uh, um, we'll look at in more detail actually when we're uh, working with the uh, OpenFlow lab. So uh, besides looking at this, we can also uh, go ahead and see if we can get now the link state information um, since the BGP connection has been made. So we can go back to Postman just to verify Uh, that it is getting that information. So let's see if we can get the link state topology information. And it looks like we are. So right now, not only um, are we getting you know the BGP information, but we're actually getting uh, ISIS, and this is giving you uh, all the system IDs, uh, the router ID, um, all the information as far as the prefixes. Um, and this is for each of uh, the actual routers. 
So that's how the um, BGP LS manager is able to actually build a topology because not only does it know about the BGP, but it, it also knows about all the ISIS links. And all this is automatic. Where, you know, if you have four routers, it's probably not that big of, big of a deal, but if you have, you know, 20, 50, 100, 200, this is a, a pretty cool thing that you're able to actually uh, be able to get all this information. Um, the other thing that I, I wanted to do is we can go ahead and just uh, take a look at where the configuration changes um, are actually occurring. Uh, so let's go ahead and Telnet, or uh, actually it would be SSH. So go ahead and SSH. I'll just pull up a, a PETI connection and actually uh, connect to the OpenSDN controller here. Okay, and when you log into the OpenSDN controller, it has an OS configuration console uh, that can help you with some basic configurations, but we're just gonna go ahead and drop to just a, a regular shell. And then we're gonna go ahead and change to a directory here to look at the actual configuration changes so that we can just verify, so, so you can actually uh, see um, when we were making uh, the RESTConf uh, configuration through the API, what actually is happening. And what we're going to go ahead and do is actually look uh, for some of the configuration changes. Um, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and look, if you remember, we configured the autonomous system number for 65223. And we're going to look in the current uh, configuration. and this is uh, all stored in an XML file. I'll go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. Let me go ahead and scroll through just so you can see it. So basically we're looking at uh, a very large configuration file and I'm just grepping through just to see the actual changes that we made. So you can see right here that we did make a change and here is the um, 65223, the autonomous system number, and also that we set uh, the 172.16.1.200 to be used uh, as a BGP uh, ID for this OpenSDN controller. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and uh, take a look at some of the other changes that we made with the RESTConf just to verify it. Uh, instead of looking for 65223, let's uh, if you remember, we set the IANA uh, to true. So let's go ahead and, and grep for that. Let's see here. Go ahead and clear the screen so it's a little bit clearer. And this is showing the IANA uh, configuration that uh, we made, basically setting the link state attribute, which is right here. And uh, also, let's go ahead and take a, a specific look at um, uh, the router peer. Uh, 
so here, here's the router peer, uh, the BGP peer that we're peering to, which is uh, router one. So this is, uh, we're just basically just verifying the REST comp so that you can see that even though we're uh, using the uh, postman and we're sending it to the API that the configurations are taking place on this XML file uh, that's in the SDN controller. So that uh, pretty much wraps up um, Lab 3 and uh, basically the, the important part of Lab 3 was uh, being able to configure the OpenSDN controllers or Route Reflector client to go ahead and get all of that information. In the next lab we'll actually be able to take that information and start using it to uh, provision uh, LSP tunnels, MPLS LSP tunnels, and that's the exploring the PSEP manager, which is Lab 4, which will be coming up right after this.